Hello, good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Welcome to the class. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, it's kind of tired, but good because we're here, right? <laughs> I hope you are doing good as well. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Yesterday we started the class for this advanced to a level and today we're going to continue, okay? As usual, we are going to check the platform, okay? So this is the class of today and also you will see there the question for tonight, okay? Remember that you need to do the homework 1.3. Read the definition and select the correct word, 
and it is like this inclusion cultural stereotypes ethnicity okay that is it now actually this is something we're not going to check right now but anyways it's the homework that is the available we are going to check the attendance then so let's see ada azucena cáceres mendoza Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Francisco Marvin González Martínez. Francisco, I'm sorry, Fernando Marvin González Martínez was that one. And this one is Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present. Good, welcome to the class. Suleima, oh, it's a pleasure. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Okay, perfect. So we are going to start the class of today. Present teacher, present. Okay, very well. I'm gonna check it out right now. Okay. Good. So let me just check. The class of today is uh, describe the benefits cultural diversity brings to companies. So we're going to start with a little video. And of course, you are going to tell me feedback, opinions, new words, vocabulary, anything that you may want to say about this, okay? So here we go. Girls, so today's lesson is all about cultural diversity. Who are you? Where do you come from? What are your family traditions? What is your religion? We'll talk about all of that today. Bye. Sorry. And basically defining who you are. So, Sahil, where are you? There you are. So, Sahil, would you look at me differently if I wore a hat? Mm -hmm. Who is the person? Still you. It's still me. Would you look at me differently if I wore a cap? It's still you. Still me. Would you look at me differently if I wore a orany? Orany or dupatta? Still you. Still me. Would you look at me differently if I wore a do rag? So this is not really a do rag, but something. Would you look at me differently or is it still me? Still you. Still me. Would you look at me differently if I wore a Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Let's make sure I cover all my hair. Thank you. Thank you. It's still me. This is me. Doesn't matter what I wear. Doesn't matter what my hair color is. Doesn't matter what my skin color is. This is me. Just like this is you. So let's go ahead and start our lesson on cultural, cultural diversity. Diversity. Let's go. So we are here, zoomed in. So what is cultural diversity? Culture is what makes us all unique and different. Clothing, food, language, music, religion, and family traditions are things that create a culture. So Sahil, what culture are you from? Do you know your culture? Where are you from? Do you know where you're from? I am from... Uh, Texas. You were born in Texas. Do you know where I was born? 
I was born in Saudi Arabia. New York. No, I lived in New York. I was born in Saudi Arabia. Then we moved to New York. Do you know where my mom is from? New York? No, my mom is from India. Your mom? Yes. Do you know where my dad is from? India. But both of them? Yes. So what do you think I am? What's my culture? Am I Japanese? What's my culture? Indian. Indian. Indian is my culture. Okay. So what do you think diversity means? Diversity means many different kinds. So cultural diversity means there are many kinds of special cultures all around the world. So let's look at some clothing from around the world. So what is this? This is, this is jean and she's wearing a little tank top. This is from what country? Mexican clothing wear. America. So this kind of, these type of clothing are worn in America, United States, which is where? Here, right? So the next clothing is from what part of the world? In India. India, you wear a sari. This is a kimono. I actually own a kimono. This is a kimono and it is from ja Japan. Japan. There were a lot of kimonos there. This is from Saudi Arabia. They wear an abaya. The men wear white. The women wear a black. I actually have one of these. Do you see me wearing them in Dubai? I wore them in Dubai. This is from what country? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. This is a I'm not, I hope, hope I'm saying this correctly, a sarafan. It's a dress, like an overall kind of dress. You have an undershirt and then an overshirt. And this dress is from Russia. Russia. Good. This is clothing from Mexico. What? It's the poncho and a sombrero. Mexico. All right, so. That was the clothing from around the world. We obviously did not go all around the world, but we did a little bit. Now we're going to look at food. Sahil, you want to know something super fun? Yeah. This is chapati. Roti. This is roti. It's from what country? India. India. But Kenya, a lot of people in East Africa also eat chapati. So it originated in India, but people in Kenya also eat chapati. Now, this is arepas. It's from Colombia. So it's, it's like a bread. It's made with um, corn flour, but it's really good. This is naan, and it's made from Turkey. We have it all the time, right, Sahil? Every time. Tortilla, another kind of flatbread. Flatbread are so famous everywhere in the world. If you just research a little bit, you'll know that everyone eats flatbread some kind of shape, name, or form. So tortilla is, you can make tacos out of that, and that originates from Mexico. Okay. And my favorite, I love this, pita bread. And pita bread originates from Palestine. Okay. So that is food from the world. Now these are languages from the world. Everyone says hello, but in a different way. So, hola is hello in Russia. Spanish. Bonjour is hello in French. French. Salam is hello in Middle Eastern countries. Salam alaikum. Yes. Konnichiwa is hello in Japan. Ko konnichiwa. Namaste is hello in India. Namaste. Aloha is hello in Hawaii. Aloha. 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 Hello. Hello. Is hello in America. Marhaba. Marhaba. Arabic people also use marhaba to say hello. Um, hello in Chinese is called ni hao. Ni hao. Shalom is hello in Hebrew. People, people from Israel say shalom. 
So another major thing about cultural diversity is religion. So there is Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Judaism, Buddhism. There are many different religions. Religion is a belief that people around the world follow. It is a very important part of culture since it affects how people live. Okay? This is the world map. Look how big it is. Look how beautiful it is. Look how cultural it is. People live in 196 countries around the world. Do you know where you are? and your parents are from? Learn more about your culture and traditions and be proud of where you came from. So Sahil, we're gonna do a super fun activity. Are you ready? Before we review, we are going to take a picture. So this is an idea you guys can do with your family. Have fun doing the Who Am I project with your family. Make sure to include a picture of yourself and answer the following questions. What's your eye, hair, and skin color? Where are your parents from? What language do you speak? What's your favorite song? What's your favorite food? What holidays do you celebrate? Do you have specific family traditions or clothing? What's your religion? Here's an example of what Sahil did. He wrote, my name is Sahil. I have black hair and black eyes. My skin color is brown. I am Muslim Indian American. An Indian food I like to eat is dosa. My favorite song is Bodo Deri by Barobax. It's a Persian song. I wear kurta pajama on special occasions. I celebrate Ramadan and Eid. I speak English and a little bit of Urdu. I There's only one of you and you have to love yourself for that. So let's go ahead and review cultural diversity. What is cultural diversity? It's the food we eat. Say it. The food we eat. The languages we speak. The language we speak. The clothes we wear. The clothes we wear. The family traditions that we have. The family traditions and what we have. And our religion. And our religion. Love your culture. Love your culture. Share your culture. Share your culture. And don't be embarrassed about your culture. Don't be embarrassed about your culture. Okay? Take care, guys. Okay, so any comments, anything that you find interesting in this one, vocabulary, words, anything? Hello. Very interesting, oh. people, teacher, but Yes, uh, it's um, maybe it's, this is a, a concept that we know, we understand, but we don't know how to explain it. And that is what I was trying to get for, for this video, because we think just cultural diversity is uh, because of your, I don't know if it's correct, nationality? nationality? Mm -hmm. huh? And we think just because this is a German man or this is an Indian girl, that's a cultural diversity. And it's a lot of things, a lot of concepts, like she was mentioning, she was saying, I'm sorry, the food or language and also religions and multiple things. Very, very interesting. Okay, very good. Yes, actually, that is your culture, I mean. So mm -hmm. what you do, what you believe, what you eat, some behavior, some things that is part of you, right? Your family traditions, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that is your, your culture. 
And of course, uh, this is going to be the topic for the first unit. So by now, anybody else wants to provide opinion about the video or anything that you would like to share regarding this? Maybe uh, about, uh, obviously, the main topic, that di di diver diversity, no, cultural diversity, okay? Uh, like, like, you, like you said, and like the woman was telling us in the video, is all the things that uh, could be to different, uh, not only one person, but uh, a group of people uh, by a region or maybe uh, by, a, by a country maybe, but uh, origin country, okay? Uh, I think in our country, in El Salvador, uh, we're not, um, not much uh, multicultural as United States, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think we look uh, like the same in, in, uh, in our country. Uh, and a couple of people that look different, okay, because uh, because of the way that they uh, they wear the food they eat or something like that. But uh, it it's interesting uh, what the what the woman was saying that multicultural is not only uh, the way. Uh, you look okay it's about more aspects or more things that you have to to be or to have in common with your native people and foreign people in okay i i think it's my opinion okay perfect very good so that is it i mean it's a group of people that have specific tradition, culture, I mean, religion, uh, way of eating, uh, many things, many, many things. So are included into this part. And uh, sure. yeah, you are, go ahead. Uh, uh, especially I liked at the beginning that she was trying to show uh, how she looked with different clothes, right? But at the end she said, it's still me, it's still me. Means that at the end we're human beings, no matter what we eat, what we wear, or where where we are from, or our religion, it doesn't matter. At the end, we're human beings, so it means we should work equally with everyone. Very, very good, that observation. Actually, that was a very good starting point, right? Because, yeah, we are the same. We live in the same planet. I know that there are, because of politics, because of economics, uh, there are borders and there are differences, but at the end, we are the same. So actually that is true. Yeah, we have different cultures, different opinions about many things, but that is uh, at the end not important because we are the same. We live on the same planet and we are here together so we can live good or bad together. So that was a very good thing. Nice, good. Uh, any other opinion, any other comments about this one? Um, uh, I think um, in some cases, uh, when people from other countries came for came to foreign countries as a refugees, and if they came with, with their children or their kids, um, their culture, uh, is mixed up so if they came from another culture and had to establish or settle down in another country they have to adapt to a new culture so it's important to take this into consideration because and um, some kids have to face that change so um, it's it's difficult sometimes for them because it's not easy 
to adapt new language, new cultures. Uh, so um, I think it's important to, to keep in mind that because some culture are miserable in this globalized world for many reasons like that I mentioned at the beginning. Very good. Yeah, that is also a very interesting opinion. So there are many things included in this one, right? So, uh, and uh, yeah, we have different cultures. I mean, uh, if we speak, uh, we can divide that in different groups, like for example, Salvadorian people. So we have a lot of things in common. But if we go further and we say about departments or cities, we then we can see some differences, right? And if you go deeper and if you speak about families, yeah, families are different. They have different traditions, different ways of doing things. So it's very interesting how that happens in this whole world. I mean, everybody's different and unique and everybody has a culture. Both are true. So speaking about this one, let's check about something. You can use internet for, for you to check. How many countries are there in the world right now at this moment? Will you please go and check and check and tell us? Well, she said 196, right? 196, she said. Is that true by now? I don't know. That sometimes changes, you know. Let me just check here. But you can check as well. Well, I found uh, something that it says that there are 195 countries in the world today, okay? So that is a lot, a lot of cultures, in mind that. I mean, if you go to Guatemala that is next to us and these are very small countries, it's different, right? You just go there to the border and people speak different. And people, they have different accent, they have different food, and that is just that. I mean, I'm I'm here I'm here in Santa Ana, and I just drive one hour, and everything is different. So, what do you think about that one? Uh, about how many cultures are there in the world? How different are we? And another question that I have for you is, how many languages are there? Can you please check into that one? And let us know. Who finds the answer? Tell us, please. There over internet, you can check. Ten, la ten languages. Ten languages, really? No. no. So it's showing oh, 7,000 the... and 100 languages. That is correct. Oh, in, okay. In my intense. So there are in the world 7,100 languages. I mean, that is a lot. In the world, ah, okay. No, I, I think present. I, I don't know. Um, question. Ah, uh, yeah, that will be the in my in seven thousand okay. one hundred languages in the world. How is that possible if there are only one hundred ninety-five countries? What do you think? Why there are that many languages and just a few countries? In your opinion? Wow, I think that is because uh, every country has their own, they have, I'm sorry, their own division. For example, here in El Salvador, we have 14 departments. Uh, Guatemala has, I don't know how many divisions, Mexico. And I guess that the, the mix or combination they make in every region 
mostly in, in Brazil, I guess, because Brazil has non uh, tribes. And um, I guess that is why we have that high number, 7,100 languages. I, I just can't think is because the countries, uh, uh, how is how are they divide or stuff like that? I don't know. That's an idea. Very good. That is part of the answer, definitely. So there are many, uh, I mean, there are countries that have more than one language, depending on where you are. For example, Hindu, they have different words in different parts of the country. And uh, so on. There are countries that they have different languages speaking that one because of many reasons. And uh, any other opinion on why do we have a lot of languages in just a few countries? Well, uh, I think that um, the countries uh, have to uh, develop another language because they need to um, try to inform uh, the rest of the community or the rest, the rest of the of the person, some specific ideas to try to organize the 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 town or the city or something like that, and they uh, need to create a way to to do that, and that's why they have to uh, develop another language. What? Uh, for example, uh, I remember that uh, when I was visiting Mexico, I visited uh, the Maya Maya country, I guess, Bolito Maya. Okay. And they were talking about that. Uh, they have a specific uh, person. I don't remember the name, but they have a representative to uh, visit the main. Um, or the city and looking for uh, medicine or food or specific things. But the rest of the country just speak the own language. language. So I think that they uh, maybe were so hermetic, hermeticos. Hermetic, yeah. Yeah. And I think that some uh, countries or some towns were were too jealous about some uh, specific topic or secrets, I don't know. And maybe that's why they developed a specific language for, 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 for them. And try to, uh, no, they don't try to uh, have a lot of uh, relationship with uh, another countries with uh, Spanish language, for example, I guess, I imagine, I'm not sure. Very good, that is true also. There are some tribes, there are some people that they are so jealous about their culture that they do not get not only the language, but many other things, right? They say, this is our culture. We don't want to, to eat hamburgers and we don't want to mm -hmm. do many mm -hmm. other things, right? We This is our yeah. culture and we love our culture and we don't need any other thing. I think that they use their own language because they are so jealous with their cultures. Very good, perfect. Actually, that happens. And as you said, there are some languages that, I mean, it's not spoken anymore, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, Latin. Latin is a language that it was I mean, the mother of many other languages like Spanish, Italian, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but nobody speaks it, Latin anymore, right? So that is a language that exists, but nobody, nobody speaks that anymore. So there are many other languages that were discovered uh, that they there are some cultures that they were speaking that language, but they do not use that anymore. So that's why we have that many languages. Okay, and maybe this when, is... when the other uh, person tried to understand that language, they received that like um, 
um, invasora, how do you say? Invaders. Invaders, yeah. I think that it's, it's like um, something like that, invasor, or ven como una amenaza. It's a menace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that is true. I mean, it's because they, as you say, they are so jealous of their culture. They don't want to lose everything. For example, here in El Salvador, mm -hmm. that happens. I mean, most of the people, they have a favorite food, maybe pizza, hamburger, pupusas. And pupusas is the only one that is from here, right? The other ones are from mm -hmm. other cultures that we adopt. So that happens a lot. And this is also in, interesting. So most spoken languages. So the most spoken, the, the language that is most commonly spoken is the English with a one million, 1,500, I guess. I just can see that one. Hold on a second. Let me just check here so we can see it properly. That is it. So it's 1,132 million people speaking English. That is a lot. And just below that one is the Mandarin, the Chinese. So when you finish English, if you want to learn another language, Chinese is the one, okay? Hindi, well, a lot of people speak Hindi. Uh, Spanish, we are the fourth. I mean, Latin America, uh, we are a lot of people here, so we're speaking Spanish, right? French, there are some countries, not only France, that speak in French. Arabic, of course, there are many countries. Uh, Bengali, not that many, but um, not that many countries, I mean, but a lot of people. Russian, definitely. Portuguese and Indonesian. So those are the most common languages, the, the languages that are spoken the most. So I have a question for you. Okay, so I believe that everybody, everybody has like a country where would you like to go and visit or live? So the question for you is, which country would you like to go? I mean, imagine that today in the class of today, I say to you, I'm going to give you a passport and a visa or a way for you to go to other country. Which country is that and why? Let's see, who wants to be the first? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, the question is, if you had the chance right now to go to other country to visit or to live in that country, which one is it and why? <clears throat> For example, in my case, to share, uh, I would choose Canada. I'm sorry, which country? Canada. Oh, Canada, good, why? Um, and I don't know, I think it's a, it's a good country with uh, good quality of life and also it's a quiet and calm country and so I, I, I like the weather too, also I know, so um, get used to the cold weather, but I think I will adapt, but Yes, for that, I think there are many good opportunities opportunities in that country. And I think it's, it's a, a first world country. So, yes, I think, I think that. Uh, Very good. In, the, in the news, I don't think many bad things about Canada. So that's why I, I will choose. <laughs> Very good. Actually, you are right. Canada is a beautiful country, a lot of nature. Just is something important, opportunities. I mean, the politics and the economics is part of the culture as well, right? So uh, that is important when you look to other cultures and you say, I would like to be there. I would like to go there. And you are also very right. Um, violence is not that common in in Canada. So I remember, I don't know if you have seen that one. I, I really like documentaries. And I remember watching a documentary a long time ago that it was called Bowling for Columbine, that it was about students in the US that they were killing people at school, right? Do you remember that? And then, well, now it's a little bit more common. And uh, he was, uh, the, the person in the documentary was 
like in investigating why, how these teenagers, they believe that it was a very good idea to get some guns and go and shoot people. And many people say many things, music, many people said video games, uh, a lot of things. And the person that was interviewing a lot, oh, oh, everybody there, uh, he said, well, in Canada, I mean, he was combining one, only one state of the US that is next to Canada. Uh, they had 256 murders that year. And in Canada, in the whole country in Canada, there were only two, only two murders. And the two murders were committed by American people. Imagine that. And he went to Canada and he said, I mean, what kind of music do you listen? And they listen the same kind of music than people in the United States. What kind of video games do you play? And they play the same video games. But why? Why you don't go out and kill people on the streets? Culture, right? Many things are involved. We cannot have an answer for that one. Maybe later on, we're going to discuss about things like that. But culture is important. Even if you consume the same things, the same music, the same food, the same things, I mean, it's not the same. Even if you are together, living there next to each other, it's not the same. Very interesting. Canada is a very good country. Anybody else? Everybody's going to say, which country would you like to go? Who's next? In my case, I would like to visit, not to live there, but to visit and, and, and just uh, see on my own <laughs> uh, Dubai. Yeah, because I just want to check if it's true that taxes are high level uh, vehicles, or I don't know, sometimes I think people is like exaggerating but i don't know <laughs> i need to to i want i would like to uh, prove it myself <laughs> and that will be the country the way but just to visit it tourists not to do oh. that mm -hmm. very good yeah dubai sounds very good they have a high level culture. Uh, they are very strict in some things, but uh, you are true. I mean, they invest a lot and they have the yeah. best things there. So it will be a good experience to go and visit and check, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I think that sometimes uh, it's part of their promotional or marketing things. I don't know, but it is true. They are rich, they have a lot of money, but I don't know if it's true. I. I Mm, I don't think, I don't know if they have poverty or there, I don't know. So I, I would like to see and check. <laughs> okay, very good. Actually, well, I don't know about Dubai, but as I understand, there is poverty everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. I was in France once and I saw people on mm -hmm. the street. So mm -hmm. and a lot of garbage sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you believe in France, everything is amazing. But no, I mean. It's better. Expensive city, expensive country, but they do not invest. They have uh, high taxes high uh, for everything. The, the uh, uh, living is uh, too expensive. Uh, the uh, living for normal people, let's say it in that way. That, they, they, that is the way how the, the things are. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. It's very interesting how that happens in every country around the world. Maybe it's less, but mm -hmm. exists, right? Good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Anybody else's? Okay, I'm going to choose then. Let's see. Heidi, tell us which country would you like to go or visit? I would love to visit France again, just because it's the city for romance and I consider myself very romantic. <laughs> very nice. So you like the culture of, of the lights and the coffees on the street and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it's very, very nice good, place right? to visit. 
Very yeah. nice. Yeah, it's very nice. It's kind of safe, and is uh, there are many beautiful places, old places. I mean, and antique places that you can go, and uh, it's a, it's very good. You are right. It's a very good experience for for visiting. I mean, it's it's nice. Good. Thank you, Heidi. Juan Miguel Brand. Hey, uh, in my case, I I'm agree with the other uh, uh, teammate, no partner that was talking about Canada. Uh, first of all, uh, the working or the work opportunities, uh, the develop opportunities uh, for people as or for for people, uh, but um, to develop as a well or good citizen uh, for all the benefits that you have in this country. But obviously you have benefits, but you have to, to pay uh, in taxes uh, and a uh, I think it's, it's one of, of the most uh, secure cities or countries over the world. I think there are in the top 10, I think of the most secure countries uh, in, around the world. And uh, for the second uh, thing, uh, I think, uh, this country is very, uh, I don't know if, if this is the best term, um, secure, yeah, secure. Yeah, security, safety. Um, the, uh, as, as I said before, the, the opportunities for work and develop yourself as a good professional, there are, uh, I have been, no, I have heard that there are uh, growing over the years and there are many uh, programs or I don't know how to say, how is the, the best uh, way to say that? Uh, many programs that uh, are uh, attracting people to live there in order to uh, maintain uh, all the all the levels of the city or of the country, okay, like uh, um, uh, mm, I I don't know how to say this. Uh, como mantener el nivel de vida del país en general. To keep the average the the average of life. Uh, yeah. level yeah of, yeah for the whole country yeah so it's like their per capita is actually the word so and that is true so again that is part of politics right i mean they're the politicians they actually they try to do things for for people maybe they are not perfect of course but they they try right they try to to implement things and people are asking, they are requesting, I need this and they there are programs about that one, definitely. Good, Canada is winning by now, good. Perfect. Yes, yes the, other, the other countries around the world, they are, uh, for me, they are um, good for visit. Uh, I would like to visit uh, Italy and Spain but um, just to visit, not to live there. Okay. okay. I think I think Canada is one of the best places to live in. Yeah, Canada is very good to live. Very, very good. Okay. Then maybe we can we can agree and we can plan a trip to Europe in English, of course, because I was planning to go next year and enter by Italy and go to other four countries. So maybe that would be a good idea. And we can Take practice. Like the yeah. movie, you got trip. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, perfect. Thank you, Juan Miguel. Okay. 
Uh, let's see, um, Jose Wilfredo, which country and why? Okay, teacher, in my case, maybe England. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, the culture of the your, I, I guess that could be could be names a uh, uh, Europe, right? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, to know more uh, about that culture, about the Europe culture. And maybe there are a lot of places that are really interesting to know, like infrastructure. I, I don't know if, if it's correct, infrastru infrastructure. Infrastructure, yeah. Uh huh. Yep. To know the infrastructure and other kind and other type of food and well, uh, different weather station and another kind of of life could be. Okay. Very good. Yeah, Europe. It's a country that is very famous because of the culture, because they care about their people, and there are many beautiful places to visit. So yeah, and also because I like the 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 football soccer. The soccer oh, that is amazing. Yeah. yeah, and those countries that are in Europe have a really good stadium. That is true. Yeah, actually, England, they were like the inventors, according to history, yeah. about this beautiful sport. Yeah, imagine that you live there in, in England and you say, my team is going to go to the final. So that, that <laughs> yeah. is good, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good experience. Very good, perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Jose Wilfell. Okay. Uh, let's see, um, Suleyma Ivan. Okay, uh, in my case, maybe Switzerland. Switzerland, good. Yeah, because uh, I see that Switzerland is one of the most um, secure countries in the world. And I think uh, it's so uh, calm and amazing uh, nature and I think that live in that kind of countries is um, it's uh, you have a better quality of life than in Latin America or another country and, and it's uh, better for you and your family okay yeah that is so true so whenever you go to any of those countries that is your uh, what you expect is that one that your quality mm -hmm. life is going to be better right anyways it's kind of it's kind of difficult yeah. you know when i was getting divorced i was planning to to go to to other country in europe i was researching and I was reading and at the end it was very hard. I mean, because you have to pay for a house that is very expensive, life is very expensive. You have to pay for insurance. Oh my goodness. So sometimes it's difficult for people that they live already there. In mind that you go there, I mean, it's difficult. Maybe the first five years is going to be very, very yeah. difficult. Then maybe, yeah, you can improve and you are going to have different opportunities because that is the reason why there are more opportunities there, right? So, but at the beginning, it's, it's difficult. And yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe in Canada is easier because you can go to Canada to work for, I don't know, one year, two years, and that you have the opportunity to live all the time that in that country. Yeah, actually, also, there are very good programs here. Maybe they are not that open. I have a friend that he went to Canada and he was working in meat, you know, cutting meat and things like that. And he said that uh, he signed a contract 
where he cannot go to other cities. He cannot get another job. He commit to come back to El Salvador. And uh, he used to live in uh, a little neighborhood. He was not able to go out only on Sundays to go and shop around in the city. So it's kind of difficult as well, that part. But if you have family there, relatives, oh, that is different. That is totally, totally different. So because they can help you get it there. Okay. And according to what I was reading, the quality of life in Switzerland is one of the highest in the world. So it's a very good thing. And the weather is also nice. So it's a win-win situation. Thank you, Yvonne. So let's listen to, uh, let's see who has not say. Sonia, is it possible for you? I like uh, Miami, Miami, Flor Miami, Florida. In, yes, in um, the park, the United, no, Juni, Universal, Universal Studios. Okay. It, because it um, uh, look different uh, films um, when when create create in the in these your studies uh, because uh, for or, or for ex, for example um uh, what, no, what stars what stars is beautiful in the in the fields is um i think uh, I start in this in this in the in this place in this in this place. Uh, I I beautiful uh, ima imagine um, best dress the the actor etc. Okay, so you would like to go and visit Florida. Actually, the weather in Florida is, is very good. It's very nice. A lot of senior citizens in the U.S., when they want to retire, that is uh, the place where they want to go to Florida, right? Yes. It's not that cold, the beach, the ocean, many places. So tropical countries. Illusion. Are, is very Illusion, good. The, the different fields. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you, Sonia. Okay, let's listen now to Maria Alejandra. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> um, I like to travel to uh, Japan. <laughs> Japan. Why Japan? Uh, the reason is that I love uh, taste or taste different types of food and the culture reference for the gastronomic gastronomic food okay. I like it <laughs> I see a lot of videos and um, I have a lot of um, or I see a lot of dishes and I like to have the opportunity to taste and maybe no the dishes have a good presentation <laughs> or that animals are like this but uh, is I don't know it's very important for me or I like and I enjoy it to taste different types of food and Permit is okay. <laughs> Travel only for it. <laughs> okay, very good. Just to go and, and try all that food. That sounds mm -hmm. like a plan. <laughs> Which is your favorite dish? I mean, the one that you would like to try, the first one that you would like to try. I like to try. Um, is a. I only, I have idea that the dish have a fish uh, like this for the, um, es como masa con pescado. Ah, okay. So there are some duh, duh with fish. 
I had to pinch and all the all the food to fry and maybe uh -huh. and it's come it's like this are a pincho. Ah okay. Okay. Uh -huh. I like to eat these or the different ah uh, uh, rice cakes. Okay. With yeah, uh, that is nice. Chili. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other, I don't know, maybe uh, why you are like this and to sell in that street or uh -huh. I think that yeah. this is my top, that the uh, street food. Very good. It's like a <laughs> ramen, right? Ramen, different kinds of ramen are very good as well. Yes. I Perfect. Think. Thank you, Maria Alejandra. Okay. Hey, Jose Osmin. Yes, teacher. Okay, which country would you like to go and why? Um, the team, Spain. Spain, why Spain? Mm, okay, so there are a lot of places that I like, so, and also the cultures as well. Um, but the best part, or actually the best place that I would like to like, visit or know a little bit more. So it's like Santiago Bernabeu. Okay. So that's why, so that place, so it's one of the, mm, the, the, the best countries so that, that, I, that I can say that, that I would like to visit. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many good places there. Uh, what else, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but 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 just uh, I can say that I would like to just travel in order to visit those places. But um, in order to live, I can say that probably Canada, Canada or U.S. Okay. So those are the good places. So in order to grow, right, a little bit more. Okay. Very so, good. Mm -hmm. Sounds very nice. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's different uh, where you would like to go and see some places or to live, right? Live is a totally different thing. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Roxana. Well, um, I have visited uh, some countries and I chose one not for to be safety. I chose uh, Turkey. Because I think uh, is well, I think that it's safe a little. Uh, some people um, say that it's dangerous in some specific places, but it's in every places, you know. Yeah. But in my case, I chose uh, Turkish because um, I think that it's a um, it's cheaper than the other uh, countries. And they have a mixed culture. Uh, when you are uh, walking uh, around the, the city, you can uh, you can see different forma de vestir sería wear clothing. Sorry. Clothing. Clothing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I I say that they have. A mixed culture because they are so jealous with uh, some uh, with their religion 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 yeah religion and um, well they have a, a specific schedule to pray to do specific things in the day but in general uh, I. I like that uh, country because uh, I think that it's uh, interesting. Uh, it's a lot of romantic for me and it's so cheaper. And in general, I think that this is very interesting. The other uh, country maybe is um, Alemania. Germany. Germany, thank you. Uh, because they have, um, it's like um, so different way to live uh, compared with Turkish. They are um, so 
cool, so so hard. I don't know how do you spell that, but um, but uh, I think that in general they have a lot of um, intelligent. They have uh, developed different uh, hard topic. Uh, for the rest of the world. I think they are uh, bad in general, but uh, talking about the, the country or the culture for me is very interesting because uh, same, I was visiting uh, that country and I think it's, um, it's not a lot of expensive than the others. But in general, uh, for me, is interesting, and maybe I, I, I will just live there. Okay, perfect, very good. Yeah, the two countries seems very uh, interesting. I never visited Turkey, but I visited Germany, and you are right. People there are cold. They, they don't speak with you. They don't shake your hands. They. Mm -hmm. They are like living their lives and they don't care about you, right? But sometimes also they are very disciplined. I had a friend there yeah. that he was, uh, he moved from Spain to Germany, you know, and mm -hmm. he had a, a very beautiful dog. And Spain is very similar than, uh, than Latin America, you know, the dog was barking at any time. And mm -hmm. then uh, the neighbors in Germany, when he was living there, he went to the city hall and he said that the dog was barking too much. And then the city okay. came to my friend's house and said, you need to educate your dog. So after 9 p.m., he mm -hmm. has he doesn't have to bark anymore. So yeah. they are they very, are yeah. But in general, uh, I don't know, uh, the environment is uh, weird because the person, there are so, um, como, como fríos, como, oh, yeah. I don't know. But I think that it's, it's interesting because uh, the people are living by themselves, o sea, viven su vida, y okay. you don't have a problem. At least if you try to get some problems, you get problem. But in general, I think that they are so, free with some topic uh, and well in my case uh, i i can be friendly and stuff yeah yeah but uh, sometimes it's uh, a little complex because uh, well in my case i don't have a lot of uh, friends i don't have a lot of time and i can spend time on that and I think that the country living like that, so they they don't have time to expand with um, um, I don't know with extra activities. Uh, they just work, live with their family, and and try to uh, develop a, a specific uh, task. But in general. I think that it's interesting culture because uh, here in El Salvador we don't have um, like our rules. Yeah, we have we we have rules, but we broke the rules, and they are they are so strict with their rules. And I think that it's important when you try to organize your country and try to do uh, the things better than the others because uh, people live there, o sea, tranquilos, I think. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's interesting. Same um, Turkish, they have, uh, they are so jealous with some topic. If you are a tourist and you broke some rules, you get a um, multa, how do you say multa? Fine. Fine. You get a fine and it's, it's expensive so i don't know if they have a lot of rules in the in the country for the rest of the people but with tourists is it it's complex um because you in some 
places you need to uh, wear some specific uh, clothes. Uh, Women, for example, uh, in some places uh, they can't wear um, skirt or I don't know something like that. It's it's weird, but it's interesting. And I think that uh, they that country have um mixed culture but not at all not at all such um united states i like united states but i think that the in general the the person there are so like um no sé discriminatorios Racist or racist, yeah. Okay. With Latin, Latin versus Latin person, it is weird. Yeah. But uh, that country, uh, that um, Turkish and and Germany are like that, but they are not Latin. Latin person is totally different uh, because in Germany, for example, they they don't uh, speak English. They hate when you speak English with yeah. them. Yeah, in Turkish is a little different because they can speak English. They try to help, they are so friendly and they try to uh, do uh, or, or, or give an answer for you. But uh, the thing is that maybe they are not uh, Latin America, uh, Latin, person and I think that uh, that's why they if I receive a racism act from them I I get because they are not like me but in United States maybe it's, it's complex because we are laughing both and I just like it but it's in my mind <laughs> okay perfect yeah actually you are very right I mean and, and that's why we're discussing about cultures, because there are many good things, but also there are bad things in other countries and other cultures, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, just let me see a few more, and we're going to check the attendance, okay? Let's see. Francisco, Eduardo. Thank you, Hey, which country would you like to go or live and uh, why? Uh, I think uh, I like me Canada. Canada, uh, okay. Right. Um, because uh, uh, in, the, in the perception, is uh, is uh, one of the better uh, country in the world for living. Okay. Uh, for different, uh, for example, for for work, uh, for education, and, and uh, quality calidad de vida, quality life, quality of life. Quality, quality life. Political life, okay. And I think it is the country that I, for me, I claim living there, living there. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I mean, the quality. Of... Teacher... Go ahead, I'm sorry. And in the, in the other country, Chile. Chile, but why? The, the, the culture for the food <laughs> and the, the nature for the, in this place, uh, there are uh, many, many places uh, for visit. Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, there are many good places there and it's interesting and the economy is not that bad. I mean, Latin America, for example, Argentina, it's not good. It's not a good place to live. But um, Chile and there are some other countries there, specific countries. Good. 
Perfect, thank you. Fernando González. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Oh, tell me. <laughs> Sorry, I just came home. Okay, I was uh, asking everybody, which country would you like to live or go and visit and why? Would you like to, okay. I would like to visit um, Norway. Okay, Norway. Norway. Yeah. Um, I really like the, the, the landscape of that country. I would like to, to go to see the, the Northern Line or Polar Line or Aurora Borealis. I don't know what is the term. But yeah, the Boreal. The Boreal, yeah, but uh in in the or in the mountains there the view is, is spectacular and i would like to know not, not only the landscape and uh, also their their coast because it's frequently watch uh, it's frequent to see uh, whales because i don't know maybe the country or or the or the geographic zone where the country is. Um, also, I like to, I like the, the architecture, or the, I don't know how, how to say that, the houses, the style of the houses. Okay. Um, that is architecture. Architecture, yeah, you can say that. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, also, that country is one of the best of Europe uh, in education, economy, et cetera. But I only would like to visit, not, not living there. Um, other country that I would like to visit is USA, especially uh, Denver, Colorado. Colorado. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to, I, I, really, <laughs> I really like to visit uh the power fill at high mile Broncos Stadium. Okay. And obviously I I I would like to to be in a game in that stadium, but you know, it's out of my list. <laughs> Maybe one day. Now if you speak English it's going to be easier of course. <laughs> yeah, the English open doors. No, but yeah. Not not only is is the is the the trip, is the cost of the of the ticket of the game, uh, is very difficult for for foreign people uh, get a ticket, even for the local people, because um, after the beginning of the season the the tickets are sold out. So, that is but true. one day. Yeah, I mean, we have a life. So if you are learning English and you are able to communicate and you save some money, yeah, little by little, yeah, everything right. is possible, good. Yeah, but one day I will, I will, I would like to go for, take a picture. At least take a picture. Uh, yeah. Take a picture with, in, the, in the stadium with the, I don't know, with the bustos, no sé cómo se dicen bustos. I don't know that one. I have to check into that one. Some like statues, <laughs> right? So yeah, some like statues. The the uh, Peyton Man in John Elway, etc. Teacher, yep, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you, but those are chest. Chest, yeah, you're right. Chest, like chest, yeah. Uh -huh. So that is it. I mean, uh, there are many opportunities that will be up, and the world is changing, you know, and we never know what it's going to bring. Okay. One day I will go. Of course. So you I can will show you the picture. You send us pictures <laughs> to the group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, Ramon, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay. Uh, Giselle. Hi, teacher. Hello. Hello. Well, so, which country right. I would like to visit? 
Yep. Mm, New York, specifically in Christmas season. Okay. I see sometimes, uh, or I saw uh, a lot of uh, these movies, and I really love the lights and all the things that 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 makes New York very beautiful in this in that season. And I already have the spirit of Christmas teacher. Ah, Christmas is coming then. Very yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I choose New York. Yeah, you are so right. New York, well, I've never been in the U.S., but if I would like to go up to a place there and in the December, definitely. I mean, it's probably very cold, but anyways, it's an amazing place to be for Christmas and a lot of lights, a lot of colors, a lot of things to buy. Very, very good. So, and yeah, I'm, I'm also a lot into Christmas. You know, uh, I started already now in September, I started already to buy all the, the Christmas presents. So I have some of those already. Really, you're very smart. <laughs> you can find yeah. a lot of a lot of, of presents and a very good prices. Yeah, I take the time to research and do things. So, and uh, or at least be ready so I know what to buy whenever the prices comes down or things like that. And yeah, uh, yeah because I like to give, for example, to my my family. Sometimes I give five or six presents so, to each other. Oh, there's some other presents. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. I really like that. So Christmas is amazing. <laughs> good. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. Thank you, you saw. My pleasure, oh, teacher. Good. So we're going to check right now the attendance because it's the time. Well, actually, it was the time 20 minutes ago. Ada, Susana Cáceres, Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Teacher present, sorry present. that my mic was uh, stuck. Okay, don't worry, that's fine, I got you. Thank you. Present. Okay, thank you. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benitez de Claros. Present. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Very good. So we are going to continue. Richard, present. I was uh, unable to mute. I don't know why. Okay, don't worry. I got you here. Okay, so we're going to see another video. Okay, that is a very small video. And then you are going to tell me about this one. So let's give it a shot. This is a short one. You've also talked about how diversity and inclusion of women is important for businesses to grow and to thrive. Tell us more about that. Well, it's really diversity of, of um, the workforce overall. So it's gender diversity, ethnic diversity, generational diversity, um, different abilities, different you know, backgrounds, sexual orientation, sexual identity. Worldwide, we have a significant talent crisis. There is not enough skilled employees in, in every country to meet the needs of the, of the growing workforce. Um, and so if we focus our talent acquisition strategy in a really narrow sector of the workforce, you know, white 
men that you know went to college in this very certain you know way we're going to be missing out uh, we all corporations are going to be missing out so all corporations need to broaden their um, understanding of, of uh, where is the right groups to pull from um, and look for gender diversity, ethnic diversity, socioeconomic, all of these different backgrounds. So it's business critical. It's good business. It's not just the right thing to do for you know, a healthy society, but it's the right thing to do for corporations to be profitable and, and successful moving forward. Okay, any comments or opinion about this one? Hello. Any comments about the video? No comments. Okay, yeah, I know that this is something that we need to discuss. I mean, it's going to be part of our of our class, this uh, module. So maybe it's not the time, but we're going to discuss about many interesting things, of course, in a very respectful way. By now, we're going to uh, read a little bit about diversity. So what does diversity mean to small businesses? Definition and examples on how diversity improves businesses. Let's see, Yvonne, could you please read the introduction? Okay. Definition and example of how diversity improves businesses. Diversity and inclusion can play an important role in a workplace, regardless of size. While large companies like General Motors and even the U.S. Department of Defense have developed a strategic plan to increase DNA. Small businesses can also do their part. After all, these businesses employ nearly half of the private sector workforce, so ramping up diversity efforts can have a profound impact. In fact, recent studies have shown that employees of companies that embrace DNI are able to make better, faster business decisions and are more likely to for revenue grow through innovation. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Okay, I think uh, when the companies have a lot of um, diversity uh, people or a lot of cultures, and you know, um, or you can improve uh, process because the knowledge that every culture has. For example, in, in the United States, you can do uh, a process in a, in a way, but in Latin America, we can improve or we can uh, make uh, the things in the different way. And that is a perfect complaint to um, make a new process or improve process in your, in your company. Very good, very nice. So that is it, I mean, it's important to have different points of view of different processes that you are implementing to the company and you are going to be better and you are going to have the point of view of the consumers at the end. So very nice. Very well. So what is diversity and inclusion? Jose Wilfredo. Yeah, teacher, give me one second because I'm switching to my computer right now. Okay, okay, I'm gonna wait, don't worry. Okay, thank you. You're all welcome.
it looks very weird with that background, right? I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it's the light. I don't know. Okay, so let's give it a shot. And uh, this is going to be for for Heidi. And then we're going to go back with Jose with Fred. Okay. What is diversity and inclusion? While diversity and inclusion might be familiar terms, it is important to, to clearly define them. Diversity not only refers to race, but also age, gender, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, disability, education, national origin, as well as marital and socioeconomic status. Inclusion refers to an organization's ability to value these differences so that diverse individuals are accepted, welcomed, feel a sense of belonging, and are treated equally. Good. What did you get from this? Uh, what I get is that diversity is the different, different cultures, as we already saw. And inclusion is the action to make all of them um, feel like uh, treated equally. Very good. The so, same race. Perfect. But uh, it, uh, the term diversity also includes, I thought inclusion talked about people with some disabilities, but mm, it's not that, right? Uh, those are included into diversity. Uh, yes, actually, uh, you can uh, inclusion is also that one. So, but it's mm -hmm. also to include anything, every every kind of people. Every it doesn't matter uh, if it's a disabled person, if it's a man, a woman, if uh, it's uh, one religion or the other one. So that will be it. Very good, perfect. So, I actually this is very good, a very good um, concept. So we refer to race, remember, like the color of her skin, right? Age, I mean, maybe people believe that it's only a race uh, and, and it's not, and it's not. Maybe it's one of the most common, definitely. Mm -hmm. But also age, I mean, in my end, uh, you cannot say that a person that is 18 years old is not going to, to provide a very good input to the company or mm -hmm. the opposite, a person that is 60 years old I mean, they have a lot of experience and uh, they will be able to, to provide some good things. Gender, definitely. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are a male or a female. Ethnicity, definitely. So about your family, where it comes your family. Religion is one of the most common and uh, is uh, something that we're going to discuss later on. Sexual orientation, I believe, is one of the things that are, is under discussion. Nowadays, right? This is something that in our culture in these days uh, is something very common. And we also will discuss about that one. Disability, as we say before with Heidi. Education, I mean, yes. Depending of the position, of course, you, you have a profile, right? And you have some requirements, but you can include people from different levels of education in different parts of the company. National origin, and marital status, of course, it doesn't matter if you are divorced, if you are widow, if you are anything. Socioeconomic status also, okay? And the inclusion is the way for you to get everybody into the company, right? Good, very nice. Uh, Heidi, you were going to say something? No, no, teacher. Okay, perfect, thank you. How can diversity help small businesses? Jose Wilfredo. Yes, I'm right. So how can how can diversity help small businesses? As mentioned, and the small business can be benefit quickly from improving their diversity and inclusion. diversity and inclusion efforts. Studies have shown the companies perform better on several indicators when they have diverse leadership, which in turn can impact every level of the organizations. What did you get from this? Um, well, business can be back correctly for an improving their solution. Maybe um, a small business 
let me let me double check. Companies perform, but also indicators when they have their reverse leadership and the impact over the level. Well, maybe this could be in the management because when, uh, like here said, studies have shown that the company performing better or several indicators, maybe because the, the leadership of the leader that is on charge of the employees, maybe have empathy with the employees and maybe give some uh, some advices to to develop uh with to develop uh different to develop different roles maybe that a uh, person growing it in the company in that position and, and knows how to uh, how to develop that that position maybe in in that case i guess or i think that will help to a small business because the the leader maybe grow into the company and um, knows the place or knows the position and how do different tasks that the position has to do or, or the position has to achieve. And that is how the company uh, perform better uh, on every situation, I guess. Very good, perfect, that is it. So we need to include different points of view, different people so we can improve many, uh -huh. many things. Very nice. The next one says financial performance, Juan Miguel Brand. Okay, financial performance. According to a 2077, 17, 2017 or 2017, a McKinsey report Companies that have that have leadership teams that rank in the top of 25% for the racial and ethnic diversity are 33% more likely to outperform their industry peers in terms of profitability. Meanwhile, another research and consulting firm Garner reports that through 20 through 2022, 75% of organizations with frontline decision making with frontline decision making teams reflecting a diverse and inclusive culture will excel will exceed their financial targets by creating a more interconnected workplace the benefits of giving on the represented groups a seat at at the table become ever clearer good what did you get from this okay good yeah. Okay, about the text. Uh, we're talking obviously about uh, diversity, okay? So uh, not it's, it's not people who are telling the things just for tell because there are firms uh, that are, uh, um, how to say this, uh, creíble, so, or with a person, with a, I don't know how to say, como con credibilidad internacional. International credibility. Okay. Uh, their studies or their uh, investigations have demonstrated that uh, this kind of organization who has more uh, people uh, with diversity are more profitable. Uh, and this obviously is the best for these kind of companies. Uh, what what you are uh, what you are looking for is making money, obviously, but um, I think for all the diversity, uh, 
these companies have a a must. I don't know is if 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 I am saying like this is is the the correct have more open open minded. So there are many maybe many ideas many. Uh, ways to uh, how to say this um, uh, like many opportunities to develop uh, ideas for another uh, groups uh, and obviously this increase the percent of of sales and obviously the profitability of a company that is the most important thing because uh, obviously they are not a uh, beneficence they are uh, companies that are uh, making sales i think i don't know if if i am uh, saying the right thing but I know I don't know. That's my idea. Okay. Yeah, actually, that is it. I mean, uh, if you take in consideration many points of view from different people from different diverse cultures, I mean, definitely it's going to help you because you are going to have different points of view and you are going to have different inputs into the processes. So, and you can see that in the in the percentages that we have read there, definitely something that we need to take into consideration. Let's see, uh, Ana Claudia, recruitment and retention. Of course, recruitment and retention. When it comes to recruiting new talent and holding on to valuable employees, one of the key factors that potential and current employees consider is the company's culture. In a recent survey conducted by recruiting site last year, 76% of job seekers report that a diverse workflow is an important factor when evaluating potential employers and job offers. While a majority of current employees think their companies should be doing more to increase diversity. Okay, what do you get from this? Mm, well, in my case, working in a, in, a, in the place that I work in the call center, uh, we that is our daily basis culture. So uh, I remember when I started working yeah, a few years ago, it was my I had my first experience working with a black person. I haven't uh, worked before <laughs> with uh, with a black person, and I felt so strange because we are not uh, get used to um, uh, live or interact uh, with people. Maybe it's easy for us or for our brain to accept people uh, using a different language or a different clothes, but when we see different color, different skins, it's like, a, I don't know. <laughs> and for me, it was like, um, I had to learn how to work. My, my mind, I had to educate my mind that they were, <laughs> they, they were talented people. <laughs> too. Um, and I think that that is, one of the most important things, the, one of the things that I uh, feel grateful that I learned to work with diversity in my job. And they, I get used in all these years of working there. Of, we are like, um, we have a lot of, um, they bomb us. I don't know if it's correct to say in that way, but they, um, uh, there is a department that uh, recruitment and also human resources that they are like uh, 
raising up. I don't know if it's correct to say raising up the flag for mm -hmm. uh, educate us in, in this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's very important because um, people, we want uh, to feel that we are respected. It doesn't matter our belief, what we believe or how we look or um, our differences. When you feel that you are accepted as you are and, and they respect and you respect also on the other hand, uh, the uh, global culture in that uh, work of, of place, it's you live a good, a good environment, a good job environment. And I agree with that, the recruitment and retention. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Yes, uh, that is very important. I mean, and this process starts from the very beginning there mm -hmm. when you are going to get the right people for your company. And of course, you need to consider diversity so we can mm -hmm. get everything that we need. Good. Fosters innovation. That is for uh, Marcus. Okay, um, as the population change, so does the marketplace. Hiring a diverse staff can be by bene beneficial. Beneficial. Beneficial, sorry, to your business as different world views. Experience and skill set expand what, what's possible, resulting in new ideas and opportunities. This innovation can also expand your market as customers often find it more appealing to work with someone with whom they can relate. Note, diverse opinions bring new perspectives, which can drive business success. Good, what did you get from this? Okay, um, the, I understand that different views can foster innovation in, in, the, in the business, in the organization. And having that different perspective or point of view from every people, from all the people who is part of the organization can give uh, the manager or the company um, diversity of new solution for one problem. So um, it's, it's very important to have that diversity because in this, and um, this market so um so hard to innovate that new ideas can result in um total new idea that can bring success to the to the company. So it's important to to um encourage to the co-worker to the employee. And if they have any idea or any solution, they can talk and they can offer that idea. So that it could be, uh, it could result in a good solution. Very good, Cre perfect. creative solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. So this is something that uh, brings a lot of things into the company, right? Maybe uh, you don't take into consideration so many things and, uh, point of view of that person, I mean, sometimes might be the one that you need for the process to be successful. So interesting. Okay, the next one says improves employee engagement. Sonia, could you please help us reading? In, okay, improves employer engagement. Engagement. Engagement, engagement. And additional benefit of a more diverse and inclusive workplace is happier, happier employees, uh, which translation to a more engage, engaged, 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 engaged uh, workforce. Uh, research has found them, them, that when companies embrace DEE, -E, policies, employees perform at a higher level, a, foc a focus of on trust. the, a, a focus, 
on the the a can also improve team moral and foster a high a higher level of trust between employees and company managers. What did you understand on this one? Okay. And focus. And I think is groups the person in in work, uh, the office, the police, the police, um, the um, difference, um, different uh, pensamientos, doubts, doubts, different doubts um, about. Uh, the the po the policy the, the company the policies um, in the city I don't know okay, um, okay. or additional uh, bueno additional benefits the more the diversity inclusion and taxes like this mm -hmm. the the difference uh, um, um, difference Employees in this in the city. Okay, very good. Yeah, you know, if uh, people, if the employees are happy within the company, of course, the results are going to be better. They are going to be more motivated and uh, more engaged into the company. So definitely something that is going to be a win-win situation. Okay, the next one says how to improve diversity in your small business. Now that you have an understanding of what DNI is and how it can benefit your small business, here are some tips to help your company move toward a more inclusive workplace. Uh, Maria Alejandra, evaluate your current DNI status. Okay. Uh, how does your company stack up uh, again? Are against other in your industry when it comes to the B I E D N I D N I. What are the obstacles that need to be addressed addressed to improve the situation? By is starting with a realistic evaluation of what policies and practices exist. Uh, you can move closer to establishing what can be and, and improve on phone. Deep, don't just stick to the numbers. To gain a better grasp of where you stand with DNI, told to current employees to gain insight from their experience and perspectives. Good, what did you get from this? DNI is an uh, innovation and uh, development and innovation or like this, so. Yeah, yes. development and inclusion. And inclusion. Mm -hmm. Um, it actually is diversity and inclusion. Okay. Um, maybe in the companies when you evaluate maybe to hire a different person, you need to try to include or the or the people in your uh, in the um, but not depends that you say that for example they are men or women or that or that gay or I don't know but only um, 
to pay attention that abilities and that knowledge for the position that you need to uh, hire or contratar uh -huh, hire. 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 Uh -huh, hire for that company and maybe it's more important that the people feel good and uh, and feel accept that how the people to uh, have different I don't know to um or different qualities or abilities or don't like to a different type of dress or different types or shoes I don't know that don't you don't use a specific clothes that you uh, have a pers una perspectiva that what is normal or no normal okay <clears throat> perfect <throat> thank you very much yeah that is interesting so there are uh, different things that you need to do for first of all to evaluate how is your diversity and inclusion status of course that is going to be easy if you check what kind of people you have there and how they have moved within the company establish new d and i objectives uh jose Osmin. okay so after identifying so your d and i status start working on posit positive changes to improve it to help you with the planning and implementation research and consulting organizations such as the Society for Human Resources Man Management and TSNE have created a guide to develop a plan that includes identifying how DNI initiatives Initiative. right? Initiative can help achieve business, business objective. In addition, make an effort to institute inclusive procurement practices, like for instance, buying products and service from a minority. Minority. Minority owned business businesses that are often uh, underused. Okay, what did you get from this? Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so as I said, so that after identifying so the status, the, the uh, DNI status, so like uh, we can like create the plant, so or like improvement, right? In order like like to get like a better result, or as well like make a research, or consulting the organizations, right? As it said. So in order that we can get a, a better result. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So yeah, You're you welcome. need to establish where you wanna go, right? So that will be the next step. Then it says, educate staff and seek support, hold training sessions and discussions on the value of DNI in the workplace and involve staff at all levels of the organization to ensure their buy-in and support, creating a DNI committee and setting accountability standards for DNI also enforce its importance. So definitely educate everybody. So we're going to change this and it's because of this and we need you to support these ideas. Okay, the last one is going to be for Roxana, measure and effectiveness. Okay, let's see. Regularly evaluate the progress or fail, failure of your plan and adjust it and adjust it, it as needed because the needs of the industry, the marketplace, your company, and your employees are ever 
changing. Your plan should be flexible to adapt to those changes. Has small, has a small business owners strategically, strategically, that's correct? Yeah, strategically. Strategically. Adjust their environment and operation to support a more diverse and inclusive workforce. They can expect to reap the benefits of the effort operationally and finally, uh, financially, sorry. Financially, good. So what did you get from this? Well, uh, the first one, uh, in general, uh, the companies and the different departments and the employees need to uh, be flexible because uh, the industry and the metals or processes can be changed. So the company in general needs to uh, adapt the process and, and the, maybe the operation, um, adapting that changes. Uh, well, I imagine that uh, when a, a company uh, try to develop a new product, maybe they have a product, a, a product prototype, but uh, they, uh, I imagine that they have a fierce uh, or a main product, and maybe that other product prototype is um, second, it's similar, but this may be in lower, uh, Braces or category than the others, but it's a new prototype, and that uh, product have some uh, different uh, process, different uh, demand demand in general. And I guess that the paragraph is is made to something like that, because if you are trying to uh, develop a new product, a new process. In general, your, your process and your department will be changed. Your operation will be changed. And you, and you need to be open mind to adapt and work on that. Very good. So definitely, whenever you have the plan already, you need to measure everything that you're doing so to check if everything is going well. Perfect. Okay, my friends, do you have any, any question before we finish? No, teacher. Clear as or chatter. Very good. So uh, the one one of today is going to be for Ana Claudia. And okay. let's check the attendance so we can finish. Ada, Susana Cáceres. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Sorry, teacher Francisco I'm here. Ah, oh, okay, good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Present teacher. Good. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Very well. Okay, so my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. 
He is training cats and dogs. I don't know how he's there. I hope you sleep very, very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay. Hello, oh. Ana Claudia. How are you? Hello. I'm doing well. <laughs> Thank you for asking here. <laughs> it's raining. Yes, it's raining. Oh, that's good. We're going to sleep very nice. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to finish some stuff of my job. So I don't know if to go to sleep now and just wake up early or stay uh, awake and awake. Yes, wait, and and continue working, and then starting today. So I don't know. I don't. Know. I I just need to think what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it seems that that is a very important uh, thing. I mean, uh, everybody is different. I prefer to stay at night, but some people they prefer to wake up early. So that is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I work in the uh, either. Uh, I work the same for me work, both work either if I uh, get up early or if I stay working late but what the situation is that today I woke up at 4 a.m <laughs> oh morning. my goodness that yeah. maybe that's the reason why I'm sleepy <laughs> yeah I think I think that's a uh, teacher today uh, I want I have one well, two questions. Uh, the usage or the pronunciation of this, uh, uh, I don't know, it's pronounced end. This, uh, the one like, uh, the, I don't know if the name is correct, the English one, the one like a uh, number eight. What is the name of that? E I'm sure. End? The number eight? No. When, for example, today in the para in the reading, or, or most of the companies, they have J and D, tarara. But the end, I don't know if it's correct to say end, but is this other E, uh, Y? No, it's not a Y. La E inglesa. <laughs> ah, okay. I don't know so what's the name in English. I don't know how to pronounce it. So, and yeah, yeah, actually that is end. And the, pron the pronunciation is end. Yeah, like, like the word and you and me, for example. Uh, but what's the name of that letter specifically? Mm, that is a really good question. To be <laughs> honest with you, I never, I never thought. Yeah, do you know, in my job on a daily basis, a lot of companies name in that way. And sometimes they use E and D, A and D, and, but most of the times they use this uh, end, end. I found this the solution here. It says ampersand. the name of that one is an ampersand. <laughs> ampersand. So an ampersand is a sign for the word end. It is written uh, or typed it's a as sign. Uh -huh. It's a modification of the term and per se end. So uh, that's why it's, it's uh, called ampersand because it's an per se. And, and per se end. Uh -huh. That sounds like a French thing, right? Well, actually, it says here that the origin is a Latin one. So, yes, it comes from, uh -huh. from, I mean, the Latin is the root for Spanish, for French, and some other languages. Uh, okay. Now, the, my, my question is resolved. It's not, a, it, my question is resolved. The other one, oh, sometimes I need to write a description of what my call was about or if I need to request the ownership for one account, I need to write in the charter of that, in, in, in the space of that. Sometimes I feel I'm using too much the article D, D, D. I don't know if it's, because I remember when a long time ago when, when I studied that, uh, we need to be specific. And also I know I'm trying to use I don't remember the name of these words like and, but uh, I don't remember the words. So, 
But sometimes, and then when I realize, oh my God, I'm using too much the article D, but I feel it's necessary. The account was because da, 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 I don't know. Maybe if, I don't know if you have like an article or guidance. Okay, I, I'm going to research and I'm going to send it to the group so you can check it. Mm. And yes, I mean, it's not the same thing in Spanish. The problem is that when we are, I mean, when we're typing, uh, since mm -hmm. Spanish is our native language, mm -hmm. uh, we compare on that one. So uh, as you say, for example, the account. Mm -hmm. In that one, you can say account. Account was created a long time ago. Or you can say Or the maybe account. I can say this account. Or this account, okay. Mm -hmm. Or customer's mm -hmm. account, for example. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the most common uh, note that I write, it's uh, something like, like this. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez called direct to the Spanish in Bank Q. He states he wants to be assisted in his native language. Uh, the, the, I created today the contact data. Uh, there is no interaction, something like that. But sometimes I feel there are too much article D on my notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some rules for that one. It's not that complicated. I remember that something that is specific, for example, the education. So that one is like more like in Spanish. So mm -hmm. you say education in El Salvador, not the mm -hmm. education, right? But in Spanish is la educación. So that's why sometimes mm -hmm. we feel that we need to use it, but sometimes it's not necessary. Uh, so in my case, for example, like in Avoy, I can say instead of... Uh, the customer says, uh, customers uh, immediately. I can start with customer says that. Da, 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 da. Uh, yes, I mean, that that is fine. So maybe depending on the context, but yes, mm -hmm. of course, I can look for a, a little article and I will send it to the, oh, to the group. Yes, that's a headache for me. <laughs> we we talked about <laughs> that article. Oh my God. That's a, it, yes, because sometimes I feel, yes, I'm writing like in Spanish, but then I review, but you know, in the call center, you, you need to write fast. And in my case, as if I log the call, it's because I want to request the ownership of an account. And our conflict, our battles daily are that if the customer speaks a little bit English and we are like in a competition with the Pakistan people, and if they have like a few words conversation like, how are you doing today? The customer answer very well. Thank you for, for asking something like that. Oh, they say, no, the customer is uh, able to understand English. So it's my customer. Da, 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 da. And when the customer calls back, he's looking for assistance in Spanish most of the time. And so we need to find the, those back and forth. It's necessary to listen to the calls. I don't know. It's, 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 so in, in that case, I feel like... Uh, most of the time we, we, and believe it or not, I've learned a lot uh, making all these courses to uh, write a paragraph better than in the past. But I feel that I'm still missing. missing. <laughs> no, but that is a good thing. I mean, it's very good that you are noticing something that is going on and that mm -hmm. you want to correct. So definitely I will be sending you some information okay. about that one. So everybody takes advantage of that. Ah, okay, okay, awesome. And the third thing I want to mention today, yesterday I was uh, uh, completing the first uh, the first homework in the in the platform. I don't know if you realize that question number three is together with number four, but there is just one answer and it's just for number four, I guess. So even though you complete and you have all them correct, the punctuation is just 16 instead of 20. It's like okay. they are together. Mm -hmm. um, let me, I will check into that one right now. So let's see how it goes, okay? Mm -hmm. And if something is going on, of course, I will report that one. Yes, the, the, the question three and four, they are together in the same paragraph, but then below you just have the answer for one of them. So even though you complete the four uh, answers and if they are correct, you just get 16 points because it's okay. something crazy. <laughs> Okay, very well. I'm going to check into that one. And yes, I'm, I'm checking right now. And I will uh, I will report that one, okay? Okay, okay. For me, that, that those were the doubts. No, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I understand 
it's not correct to say doubts, like questions, right? Because when I say doubt, it's like I'm doubting or, or what you are teaching or what, what I'm learning from you, right? So I yeah. must say, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, that would be, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so my questions now are resolved. <laughs> Very good. I'm very happy that you are moving on and uh, definitely will be uh, checking some other things. If you, I mean, in the future, there will be option for you to stay if you want at the end of the course. And of course, it will be a pleasure oh, to yes. be with you. Great. Also, yes, I did it in the, in the, in the past. I remember uh, uh, someone wasn't the day that it was uh, his or her tour. I don't remember who it was. Yes, I stayed because sometimes the platform is still like, give me some errors, but yes, I'm working on it. Okay. 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 Perfect. Then it was a pleasure. Have a good night. And of course, see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.